All right, so I'd like to call the meeting to order. Do I hear an acceptance of the minutes of the April 12, 2023 meeting? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Third. Okay, we have communication the monthly operating report for April 2023. Yeah, let me just share the screen. So, if you guys have any questions, let me know. So, is the nitrogen buck running the same? Is that 20 pounds under? Is that what we had? I think we were 18 pounds last month. We're about 20 this month, um, which is good because if you look at the flows, we were averaging about 4 million and we had a max of 5.8. So, one of the storms we had was Sunday night into Monday, and of course we sampled for nitrogen Monday. So we actually did well considering the flow was up. Um, we only used micro C one of the weeks in April, which is basically it's it's like a sugar water, it's like a glycerin. So we add that to just give it more BOD coming in when it's diluted from rain. Um, the other three weeks we basically had the numbers just based on the fermentation tank. Um, so average 3.8 million a day. Removal efficiencies for BOD and TSS were both over 98%. 84.2% uh, nitrogen removal, which was 20 pounds under the permit. And we're now in phosphorus season and UV season. The E. coli geomine was 2.46, um, which is under five, almost not detect. Any questions on that? So that is phosphorus. Have we been doing that well right along? Yeah, well, phosphorus is the 65.56 pounds yeah. on the effluent. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so far no chemical. Um, typically, we have the polyaluminum chloride if we need to use it, but we haven't had to yet. Um, the good thing with the fermentation tank is since we have more VFAs and BOD going in the aeration tank, you can kind of get better biological FOS removal too. So it's kind of balancing your D-night and your biological FOS. So. Any other questions on operating report? Well, the, even with that two weeks of rain, Mark, the, the, yeah. you didn't have any issues. No, the, so obviously it's the monthly average. So the one week, our limit's 178 pounds. I think the week... The day we sampled, we were doing like 8.9 million. So even if our nitrate was one, we probably still wouldn't have made it for that week. But the other averages were like 160, 120, and 70 pounds. So we were still under. So didn't really affect us. If we had a whole month at eight, that might be, might push us over. But yeah. that would take a lot. <clears throat> okay, then we got the engineer report dated April 2023. Yep. So sewer pump station construction repairs, uh, Maple Ridge, we serviced the generator. We were built the carburetor, change oil and flush the gas tank. Uh, that's just a small portable generator that we keep there. Tungsis pump station, we had a pump fail there. We've had a ton of pump fails there. Um, we even cleaned the wet wall out. So there's not much debris in it. Um, we ended up putting like a small gasket on the wear ring in the impeller so it opens up the gap so it can pass some solids so it should help with that so we don't have to pull them all week west farms pump station we met mcvac uh, we cleaned the wet well all the rags and grit were sucked out this is done quarterly and we reset a generator alarm we're trying to troubleshoot where it's coming from we think it's something with the harmonic frequency when the generator turns on and it's basically tripping the vfd in the panel snowberry pump station we pulled pump two uh, we found rags and debris in the pump, and it was put back in without any further issues. In the month of April, we jetted Bridgehampton, Elm Street, Maple Avenue, Perry Street, and School Street. We also vacked and cleaned three manholes on Bridgehampton. I think they're still hitting them up there in construction, and they're shifting. So we, we're going up there and cleaning them out because we've had a lot of process and gravel come down the line in our uh, system. Uh, we continued assisting highway and cleaning and back in the storm drains on Whispering Road and Silversmith. 
Tungsten and Sobury pump station wet wells were cleaned in the month of April. Um, we're working on a generator pad schedule for all state and Harlan. They should be coming in in the fall. Um, we were told last year about 12 to 14 months, so I'm hoping it's going to be ballpark in that timeline. The VAC truck uh, hydraulic lines were replaced with a cone, and the crane truck oil filters were also completed. We continued to clear right of ways. The right away from Hemlock Notch to Bridgehampton and the Allstate Force Main and right away were inspected and cleared. And we cleaned out storm drains and used a sewer camera. Uh, we inspected a sinkhole on Whispering Rod Road for highway the repairs and maintenance at the plant. Was, Go ahead. Sorry, Mark. Was there, there was a sinkhole or you were investigating the possibility? Yeah, so Jim called me from highway. He said, because they're paving Silversmiths, Whispering Rod, the whole area up there by Westwoods. Um, and they, so they were doing the storm drains and we're doing the manholes. He said they had a sinkhole over one of the lines for the storm drains. So we cameraed the whole line and there was nothing. So it looked like probably maybe like a foot, 15 inches deep from the top, but the pipes down probably four or five feet. So it could have just been something small. Uh, we began testing a new polymer for the dewatering process. It should result in higher percentage solids while decreasing total polymer usage. So if you look at like the biosolids on the actual summary report, <clears throat> we were 20.5%, which typically, I mean, we're 18 to 20, um, but we've been trying to use the new polymer to see what we can get. We've had it up to 25%. It's kind of diminishing returns at that point, but if we can average 21 or 22%, it's probably going to help us with volume over the course of the year. Just rotate this one more time. Uh, we put in the new Borger dewatering pump for the second dewatering press. If you guys remember, we had put the first one in last year. So now each press has increased gallons per minute, and we're still maintaining all the spec loading rates that we started up with. Uh, we completed all the lawnmower services for the spring, oil changes, filters, and belt replacements. The oil was changed in final clarifier number one. We also put new oil seals on number two and three. Uh, we installed a new auger wiper on the screenings auger. Uh, we basically, after we had the failure, I think it was two years ago, we had to pull the whole auger out and fix everything. We've kind of been preventative doing this every couple of weeks, um, months, I'm sorry. So if you see here, this is kind of the wipers, like a, um, almost like a, like a brush. So this basically takes any rags and pushes it into the cleaning unit. So something came in the plant, we don't know what it was because it wasn't in there, but it completely like demolished the whole wiper and the metal. So there's set screws in here and you can see like a set screw here and it pulled out all the metal. So what you see in the second picture would literally be this top part here and it wraps around the whole auger. So we ended up replacing it, cleaning it and knock on wood, we should be good for another year or so. We're just not sure what came through it. Did you mention earlier like you, like some of the Road work was resulting in gravel. Yeah. I mean, could it be something like that? I mean, it could. Um, before, I should have taken a picture of the whole unit. Before it, there's a, basically, it's like a compactor. It's a, it's a big motor that just crushes anything that comes in. Hmm. It should have broken it apart. But to say, like, it couldn't have gotten through, I mean, it could have. So the things with these units are, they they compact everything, and they spray, and they clean it. So it's great because it's clean when it comes out, but the more you compact it, the more pressure you have. So it could have been that too. We're, we're not sure, um, but it's the first time that's actually happened. So we had a new uh, wiper. We put it back on. Uh, we had a new flush valves for the primary sampler lines and exercise the final effluent pumps as part of quarterly maintenance. And that is it for the report. Uh, refresh my memory here. I, I see we got the Avon flow meter. Yep. Is that an annual thing or when? Yeah, so that? it's annual through <clears throat> our inflow and effluent flow meters here at the plant. We have to do by July 31st every year. So we do those. And then usually when I do those, I schedule Avon as well. So Avon, we just do for billing purposes because we bill them obviously financially. So 
we calibrate the meter so both towns are present we go through and then there's no discrepancy in what the flow actually is but now then our vessel for the final number this is true yeah is it burlington where we have the other full meter yeah so burlington we put in some portable flow meters again this spring just to compare from last year too um, and then West Hartford, we met with last week too, because some of the flow from Tunxis Road goes to West Hartford. So they had put in flow meters. So we're putting in ours as well as a monitor just to see if they match. So it's kind of like three towns, really. But we're on West Hartford system. What was that? Sorry. We're in West Hartford system. Um, you know, Tunxis, yeah. So Tunxis Road, the top of there, and a couple of the streets go into. The West the MDC system for West Hartford. So I'm not sure where those meters are located for them, but we're putting them in probably in the next month or two just to see if our data matches. Um, and we'll see. Because what they were basically finding was in high flow events, they were saying we had some infiltration, which is probably true. Um, I know Tonsis, there's two streams that go right on the side of the road there. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting some infiltration from there mm -hmm. but so is any of that stuff adjacent to wood pond too i've i'd have to look on the map to be honest i'll check for next meeting uh we know that the mdc rates are yeah it's all that high middle road and all that area there yeah and once once we're complete i'll touch on some of that too okay so that's it um, okay. I'm listing the property with sewer permits dated April 2023. So basically, these were just fees collected for building permits on Willowbrook, Bridgehampton, uh, and Dunstable Close, or Silver Charm Drive connection fee to be paid with general permit and then 855 Farmington Avenue there's just a repair that sounds like working at Kentucky Derby so we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there was a guy in the interview on radio GIC that uh, actually had part ownership of that force number four it's, it's kind of interesting yeah one thirty chair or something like that's that. the one that's a stable with don't tell my wife uh it's what it was a I think it was a different horse, but it was uh well that wasn't the name of the horse. Oh, oh uh, that was the name of the stable. Yeah, that, uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah. The pro courier is a guy out of West Hartford that yeah. owned this thing, but he's been doing pretty good. And the horse looked like he was off to good start, but you can never see how those things can shut. All right. Any unfinished business, Mark? Nope, that should be it. Unless there's any, any questions. Hearing none. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All right. Motion is Thank you for coming, everybody.